all wheel drive on the Mazda three, uh, really speaks to, you know, us evolving as a brand, uh, and taking advantage of, of market opportunities, right? This is a, a market that clearly is asking for all wheel drive. Our customers have asked us for all wheel drive and we've responded. It's an incredibly predictive system. So it's able to anticipate the need to redistribute the torque before the need actually arises. I'll give you a couple of specific examples. So the system is using uh, a number of sensors that you wouldn't normally think would be connected um, to the drivetrain. So for example, we're looking at ambient temperature, outside temperature. We're looking at whether or not the windshield wipers are on. And from those two pieces of information, for example, we can infer whether it's precipitating, if that precipitation is likely snow or rain. Um, and we use that kind of information to feed forward into the system to be able to predict before the tires ever start slipping that they are likely to do so. And what that allows us to do is to accommodate for surface conditions as they change in real time. Uh, the, the fact that it's able to uh, predict a change in the surface condition in some cases even before the driver is aware that that's going to happen, it's pretty remarkable. And we've managed to make our all-wheel drive system so much more efficient that there's almost no fuel economy penalty uh, to carry that drive system around. Um, there's a bunch of uh, detail work that went into how we got it that efficient. But once we got it to this efficiency level, where we're talking less than a mile per gallon difference between two-wheel two -wheel drive and all-wheel drive, now this opens up the opportunity for us to put all-wheel drive in more cars and give people the flexibility to know that they can they can drive on any kind of surface in any kind of condition and get the traction benefits of all-wheel drive. And this kind of opens up usefulness in, in areas where you don't necessarily expect it. Even in Southern California where our offices are, um, I can be going around an entrance ramp and they've adjusted the sprinklers wrong, watering the, 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 the grass in the middle of the ramp and they've got a big puddle in the middle of the ramp. And, and you know, I'm full commitment having a good time on this entrance ramp. As soon as those front tires hit that slippery spot, our system actually is measuring the amount of steering torque it takes for me to go around the corner. And when you hit something slippery, the steering gets lighter. Uh, so the steering system sees the steering get lighter, talks to the all-wheel drive algorithm, uh, tells it, hey, the surface friction just went down, and it immediately couples the, the rear wheels and starts sending drive to the rear wheels. And now that's taken load off the front tires, and the front tires will have more grip than they, than they otherwise would have on that slippery spot car stabilized and I can get through that wet patch with a lot less drama because I've had a very smart all-wheel drive system to figure it out. So we really believe in the driver's ability uh, to, um, to perform the task and our duty or the car's duty is to give them the best opportunity to do so. We've just introduced GVC Plus uh, with this uh, Mazda 3, and we're going to be introducing it in the rest of our cars as well. What GVC Plus does is it works on when we turn out. When we're in the middle of the corner, we start unwinding the wheel. We initially wanted to do the same thing, where we would then accelerate a little bit, and shift weight onto the rear tires, which are going straight, and it'll help straighten the car back out. But that actually felt uncomfortable, so we, we kind of held that back for a while, tried to figure out how to make it do have the same effect when still feel right. Uh, and finally, what we ended up doing is, as you unwind the wheel, we'll drag the outside front brake just a hair. Uh, and that helps the car straighten back out as well. Both of these inputs you can't actually feel. As you turn the wheel, you don't feel the engine uh, reduce power. All you feel is the steering feels tighter uh, and more precise. And the steering effort is actually a little bit higher right when you turn the wheel. And the, 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 the plus, where it's dragging the brake on the outside, you don't feel it drag the brake. What you feel is the steering feels less damped and forward feels like it just more directly goes back where you back to straight where you wanted it to go. One misconception about GVC is people think that it's just a, for driving really hard, you know, going out the twisties and, and having fun. Uh, it turns out when you're driving straight, you're actually making tiny little steering corrections all the time. Each one of those little steering corrections, GVC is making it more precise. And so what we found is that when we're, we're testing the system, we had prototype cars that had switches where you turn them on and off. If we turned it off, Driving down a straight road, people will be doing all these little corrections. And then we turn it on, and they, they just smooth out, and they make, make hardly any corrections. Because it turns out, every little correction you make would now work. Whereas without GVC, every correction has a little delay, and you overshoot, and you overkick, and you, you just chase it all around. So this actually makes the car feel more stable in a straight line.
because those little corrections that you're subconsciously making are each working as they're supposed to. The seats are kind of the, the first thing you can feel to, to illustrate sort of our new human-centric approach to developing the car. We don't just say, here's a seat, we built the seat, sit on the seat. We stop and, you know, we take that human-centric approach and we really say, okay, how does the human body actually work? So we've always been really focused on how the driver feels and how they interact with the car. We're trying to be more scientific about that and really more deeply understand the core human needs for the people in the car. What What is it that makes a car feel right to them, right? Um, and when you really get down to basics, what a person is doing in the car is they're trying to balance their body as a bunch of weird forces come in as they roll over bumps or go around corners, right? People haven't really evolved to sit down and, and deal with motion. Like, you, you move on your feet, you sit down when things are still. Um, so it's a little bit of an awkward thing. Our body isn't really designed for that. I think one good example of what that looks like, or a tangible example of what that looks like, would be the, the seat. Uh, in the new Mazda 3, which is based on our concept of, of the correct uh, posture, um, which is very much an upright, uh, like a walking uh, upright posture, um, with the back in, in the traditional kind of S-curve uh, that you would see when you're standing up. The idea is that by setting the foundation correct, if we put the pelvis in the correct position, in an upright position that mimics um, your, your posture when you're standing, the body knows how to self-balance on its own. We don't need to use the seat to hold you upright. And so in designing these seats, we try to design them to really make it more comfortable to sit into that in that position and to get your spine into the, the sort of natural S-shaped curve that it would have when you're standing uh, to support your lower body uh, in, in a way that is going to keep your pelvis back up against the back of the seat. So uh, the thigh support underneath the front of your legs is really important. We raise that up so that the seat, the seat bottom slopes upward so you don't, you don't slouch forward like this, right? You could contrast that to uh, a more machine-centric approach to the same problem would be to provide uh, a bunch of uh, lateral support through the lumbars to hold, to, to hold the body upright. It turns out that all of us instinctively um, know how to balance ourselves perfectly well uh, as long as we're in the correct position. Uh, and we've designed the, the seat from the bottom up uh, to allow you to do that. And the seats at the end of the day really are more comfortable uh, and you're much less fatigued.